At the end of this all, we've discovered something a little unexpected. We started with an experiment with a distinctly discrete provenance, tossing a coin repeatedly. And out of the ruins emerged a real number. Somehow we had transited from a discrete setting into the continuum. This understanding propels the start of a new structure to handle problems in the continuum. So let's begin again. We're starting with the coin tossing experiment, tossing a coin repeatedly. The sample points of such an experiment are unending sequences of heads and tails. And if we write zero for a tail and one for a head, we have unending sequences of zeros and ones. And as we saw, such sequences can be identified with a dyadic expansion for a real number, in this case, one thirds. And this leads to a correspondence, a dictionary of translation between the coin tossing experiment and an experiment involving a continuum of real numbers. Our outcomes now are numbers which take values between 0 and 1. Now let's take stock. If we remove the, the superfluous detail here, which is adding color to the game, the idea of the coin and the tossing, what we are left with is a plain, unvarnished real number. The sample space now is a continuous space. Omega is the unit interval. And formally, we'll write it as a set of real numbers x, where x ranges between 0 and 1. The sample points here are numbers x between 0 and 1. What are the natural events in such a setting? Now, at the moment one has a continuum to deal with, individual points start losing their significance. There are just too many of them. But what is natural and appropriate here is that the basic events are intervals of interest. For example, the interval from A to B. And naturally now we want to ascribe probabilities to these events and to more general events. And how do we assign probabilities? We appeal to the fact that the symmetry in the coin tossing endeavor makes every quartile as likely as every other quartile. Each region is as likely as any other region, and therefore the probability of an interval should be proportional to its length. In this case, the interval A to B has a probability B minus A. Key here is the fact that the probabilities are invariant with respect to where the interval is. The probability only depends upon the length of the interval. This fuels a potent understanding of what is going on. So let's start again. Key here was this translation invariance. Probabilities do not depend upon the interval positioning, but only on the length of the interval. Suppose we consider an infinitesimal interval situated at x with an infinitesimal length dx like indicated by the red bar and the figure. Well, what probability should be assigned to this? Naturally, the length of that interval, in this case, that infinitesimal length dx. Now, pause for a moment and look at that equation. On the left, we have a probability, or more precisely, a probability mass. It's got weight gravitas. On the right, we've got a length. Now, to equate mass to length, there must be something multiplying length. And what must multiply length? Mass divided by length. Now, suppose we rewrite d of x as 1 times dx. dx, again, is going to represent length. 1 must then, perforce, represent a mass per unit length. And this mass per unit length is uniform everywhere in the interval. Of course, we're going to multiply this mass per unit length by a unit of length. And together, we obtain that mass divided by length times length gives you mass. Now, what is this object, mass divided by length? 
That is what we call a density in physics. And we use the same nomenclature, the same kind of vivid physical illusion here to think of a density as something which has got units of mass per unit length. Now, once we have this in hand, we can stitch together probabilities by using additivity. Let's start by taking our interval and breaking it up into a whole bunch of teensy weensy little pieces, a whole bunch of infinitesimal pieces. Well, we'll simply write down that the sum of these probabilities must then give us the interval probability. Now, what's the sum in a clean notation? We sum over all these tiny intervals of the probabilities of those intervals. Of course, we're going to make these subintervals tinier and tinier and tinier. And in the limit, you recognize the kind of transition we have in the calculus when we go from discrete to continuous. Sums segue naturally into the Riemann integral. And therefore, the sum in the limit as these infinitesimal intervals become tinier and tinier becomes the integral over that interval from A to B of what? Of 1 times dx. This must therefore, in the limit, as the interval sizes become tinier and tinier and tinier, be exactly the probability of the interval A to B. But of course, this is an elementary interval. And you evaluate it, and of course, we get, as we must, B minus A. But this is a potent understanding. What we have done is represented an interval probability as an integral, as an area under a curve. Let's promptly consolidate this understanding. So, here again, an infinitesimal interval of length dx has got probability 1 times dx. Identify 1 as a uniform density per unit length. The probability of the interval is then the integral of 1 times dx over this interval. Let us introduce a function, and naturally we're going to call it the uniform density in the unit interval. Let's call this function u of x. u, of course, is for uniform. It's a mnemonic. u of x takes value 1 in the unit interval and 0 outside. We're going to think of u of x as telling us something about the mass per unit length at the point x. How do we compute probabilities? We simply integrate this function. Remember, u of x is just a fancy name for 1 as long as x is between 0 and 1. Outside 0 and 1, it is 0. The probability is obtained by integrating a density over the region of interest. Ah, that gives rise now to this idea that probabilities in the continuum can be associated with integrals with areas under a curve. This is a potent idea because now this leads to the idea that we can perhaps have other continuum experiments with different mass distributions per unit length. This is next. <laughs>